Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today we're going to go over some more with Random Forest. I'm not going to do the complete thing, but what I want to show you is I want to show you on the Titanic data set from Kaggle that people have been using how to go and figure out what are the predictors or variables that you should focus more on for your models. Now, sit back for a second. When you look at that, I'm going to show you these graphs here. I'm going to show you this right down here where it's going to show you, you know, what predictors are important and which are not. But I want you to think for a second. If you have a 75 to an 85% score, you're doing very well in that. If you have above an 85 and you can't document how you got your score, that's because you probably cheated. When you see all those people that have perfect scores, that doesn't mean they know how to do a good model or they even used a model. What they probably did was took the test set and they went out on the internet and found the victims list and they correlated it quickly and came out with a 100% answer. That doesn't help you in uh, modeling or creating predictive models in the slightest bit. If they overfit a model many times to make that, to get a much higher uh, score, that's not going to help them either. And the reason being is it's only applicable in that one data set, and it's not applicable to anything else. You can't go and do that in the real world. So what I'm going to show you here is how to get yourself to get to one of those higher scores in the 80% range or something like that. Now, what we got here is first I'm going to show you, I'm going to bring in the uh, libraries here. I've got Party, Random Forest, Tidyverse, and Zoo. Okay, And what we're going to end up with once we're done with this is this graph right here that's going to show us our error versus the number of trees. And then we're going to end up with this probability node right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first, let's minimize this, and I'm going to bring in so you can see the code here. This is where I bring in the uh, CSV, which is the common delimited file for the training set for Titanic. You save it from Kaggle, download it, put it on your uh, computer somewhere, and then this is your address to get to that. Then if you notice, I'm not just using a regular read.csv. I'm also adding in strings as factors equals true, okay? And so what that's gonna do is it's going to set my strings instead of them staying as strings to factors. There's a difference between the two, and I showed you in the other previous video we did on random force models. If you have them as straight strings, they will not work. So you need to have them as factors. So by putting this little bit of line right here in there, where strings as factors equals true, makes it so that they're not going to be in double quotes when you list them out. Okay? Uh, if you have a question on that, please go to my other previous video on that. Now, so we put that into this trainer one data frame. So that's what this does. We're putting it into trainer one. Then what I want to do is I want to check for missing values because on data sets there can be, and we know with this one there are some. Okay. So by hitting summary of that data set that I've brought in the data frame, it gives me this. Now look at that. Under one of them, age, we see right here, here's age. We see NAs 177. That means that those are 177 blanks, nulls, whatevers. Okay? So what we do is we have to fix for that. So to fix for that, we go right here and see this line of code right here? What I'm going to do is I'm going to use replace. And replace, we put replace trainer one, which is our data set, our data frame that we brought in, true. And we're going to L apply trainer one any dot aggregate. So what that's going to do is we're going to fill in any of the NAs with the column mean for any column. So in this case, the only column that has these NAs in it is age. So for all of these 177 ages that are blank, we're going to go and fill them in with the mean for the column. That's going to get us much more accurate. Uh, there's other ways to do it. There's other models that use different ways. In this case, we're going to use that. It will give you some warnings. We're going to ignore those warnings I stated right here. So I'll show you right here. If I hit Control and Enter, this is in our studio. Here is our warnings messages saying returning in a argument is not numeric, blah, 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 blah. All right, let's, to make sure it works, remember these are warnings. It's not errors. So an error would mean it didn't work. Okay. A warning means it did work, and you can see it up in your global environment that it works. So if we bring this back, we will be able to see the trainer1.dev in there. I'd have to open this up a little bit bigger. There it is right there. This would not be in there if it did not work. Okay, if it had an error, that would not be in there. So next we want to do is we want to go down here. We've done that. We want to test it. We want to see 
are those NAs all gone? So we do the summary thing again, but this time we don't do it on trainer one, which is the original data frame. We put this into a new data frame called trainer1.dev for development. So that's what this na.aggregate does, this function underneath replace, okay? And so in this one, we just run this, control and enter, and where is age? Oh, it's up above, all right, that's fine. There, see how the age column right here, it no longer has the NAs at the bottom of it, that's what we wanted, okay? So now it, they're all filled, and uh, by the mean, which is gonna make them more accurate than they would be if they didn't have that. Now, we're gonna go down here, we're gonna say create the forest, right? So we're gonna put, a, we're gonna use the random forest function, see it right here? We're gonna use this, oops, make it the R in there. We're gonna use this function, okay? And we're gonna use it for survived, right? Because in this case, with the Titanic data set, what we're looking for is the people that survived, right? Or that died, so they're under survived. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these classes here to figure out these columns, these variables, to figure out which ones are gonna be more important for us to zone in on. Which ones do we wanna maybe split out, look deeper into? And which ones are basically garbage or you know not very important to us? So, um, or that we might have to combine with some other features to make them more important. Uh, what I want you to understand also though is if you look at this line right here, it says do not use predictors with 53 plus categories. So in other words, I don't have name listed there. If I had name, name has over 800 different uh, names in there, they're all unique. And the problem with that is it won't work for this function, okay? So if I put name in here, it just won't work for it. So that's why I'm not gonna list it there, it will give me an error. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put data equals trainer1.dev, right? So we're gonna use this one, we're not using the one up above. And what we've got is it's structured just like this. So if I run that, it's gonna put it into this new data frame called output.forest1. So let's hit enter, right? And that's our output of it. Again, we get a warning message, but that's fine. It created it, it's a warning message, not an error message, okay? And then what we wanna do is we wanna look at it. So let's take print output force one, we could do that. So let's do this. And it tells us here that we have, uh, here's our random force is how we built it. Um, regression, number of trees is 500, number of variables tried each splits two, percent of variance explained is 47.76, and the mean of the square residuals is 0.12355, blah, 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 blah. Okay, what we wanna do next is I wanna take that and I wanna do an importance on it because this is what I really wanna get from this right here is the importance of each predictor. Okay, so these guys here are all these variables right here are actually also predictors because some of them are gonna be important and I could use them to say, okay, if the sex was this, if the uh, siblings were this, if the fare was this price, you know, they had a higher chance of dying or of surviving. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go and run this for importance, let's do that. And that's how you run it, it's got two colons, importance function, right, like that. And what that one does is that gives me the most important piece from this, this gives me the listings of how high the importance is of these different uh, predictors. So as you can see from this, Embarked is not that big of a, it's the lowest one on the list, same with SIBSP. But look at sex, that is a huge indicator. We already know that by looking at data, but that shows it here. We've got uh, passenger class, we've got age, and we've got fare. So right there, your top three would be sex, age, and fare. So you know you gotta look into those three. Passenger class will probably also be important and play a big role. And uh, you'll see that if you wanna get a higher score in the 80s to 85s on Kaggle with it. Um, then what we can do is we can hit this plot right here, plot the output dot forest one, which is this guy right here, which is our random forest. If I plot that, I get this plot right here. Let me bring this for you right here. And all this, what this does, it shows you the error, right? The relative error and the number of trees. So we're looking at 500 trees, look at the error. Very, very, very low, okay? So it's so low that you're probably looking at about a 92 to 95% accuracy. There's different ways of doing this to determine that. But that's a pretty accurate uh, random forest right there. So from that, 
you know, I can go back. This this one here really doesn't have anything to do with this, but this would show me, you know, the number of, you know, the percentage that died versus survived. And this could also be, uh, you know, for the different uh, uh, predict predictors or variables here if I wanted to use that. But what I basically wanted to do here, the purpose of this was to give you a quick way to figure out which columns to pay more attention to and which columns or variables or predictors to put to the side maybe later on or maybe to combine them with something else. But you right now can see right off the bat you have four predictors that are very uh, important. Fair, age, sex, and passenger class. Now obviously name might apply, but the problem is if you put name in here, watch what happens. I can take away, let's take away uh, embarked, right? Let's put name in its place, right? So let's just put this in there. Oops, I help I spell it correctly. And if I go back and run this again, so let's just do this, right? Was it name or names? Oops, no, it's name. Get that thing out of here. So then we go this way hit enter and you see what it says it gives you exactly what I was telling you would happen error and random now this is an error so it won't write the output dot forest one in this case so the error in random forest default cannot handle categorical predictors with more than 53 categories see that it's that simple so you can't use something like name in there unfortunately you that now name might still be important and I know for a fact it actually is but I'm not going to give you a hint on that of what that is there's other uh, kernels out there that tell you how to uh, figure out and get a higher score and stuff. But so for this one, for this random forest, we cannot use in this function that. So we have to stick with embarked and um, run it as is. And it still shows us the information that we want, which is right here. So what we wanted to end up with here was from that was our uh, what classes or what uh, variables and predictors are most important, which we can clearly see here. So we can zone straight in on those and address those, and split those out, figure out what the importance is there. And we can also see our accuracy right here. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful, especially if you're doing that Kaggle Titanic uh, thing. If you want the data set, it's right there on Kaggle. Just go on there and look up Titanic. And then there, there'll be, I think it's like the second link or third link on there is for the data set. Uh, for that and then there's a training and a test uh, set so this is built off of the training set as you saw earlier up here uh, train.csv under Titanic well thanks for watching please like and subscribe down below so you can see all my other great videos I have coming out and have a wonderful day